What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC and broad market update to bring all of you this evening. So what we're going to be talking about in this update is a little bit of the technicals that we're seeing on AMC right now. There's some key things that I want you guys to take note of. We're going to be going over a little bit of the Ortex data, the options data, but some of the key things that we need to be discussing in this update is one, this massive $9 trillion loss that might not come as a surprise to everybody, but everybody has witnessed this over the last couple of months. Now, in addition to this, we are seeing some very important data coming out from these, these key market data point providers, specifically Goldman Sachs, that are showing us that the market could be setting up for a very, very significant move. Now, there's a couple of things that we also have to keep in mind, but you guys are gonna be fully prepared going into the rest of this week after this video. So before we get into the rest of that uh, information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So again, guys, AMC, very flat on the day, down 0.24%, three cents, Close the day right at $12.50. When we pull this onto the four hour time frame here, a couple of things that we need to look at. One, we've been really trading in this range right here from 11 to about 13 over the last couple of weeks. Now, we are hunting this 1348 cross right here on the four hour, but until we end up seeing that momentum to the upside here, we're probably just gonna mess around, trade up, down, sideways until the overall market gives us that confirmation that we are trending back to the upside and AMC can get some of its firepower back. And again, guys, if you do wanna learn a little bit more about this 1348 strategy, make sure you check out that link down below. We have some awesome stuff coming for you guys. We have that real-time options data already. Over 55 private live streams every single month, making sure that you know exactly what you are doing going into the market every single day. Now, when we come over to the Ortex data here, we've got 22.79% estimated short interest on AMC, so still very high levels of shorting, 19.16% average cost to borrow, 24.58% max cost to borrow, with about 193.5 million shares on loan. Now, we did talk about this in one of my videos from this weekend, that we were expecting to see a little bit of a decrease in AMC shares on loan just because of the amount of shares that were returned on Friday. But today, 1.81 million shares were borrowed, so we're probably going to hop right back up to that 195 million share on loan range. Now, coming over and take a look at the options chain, again, nothing too crazy on this week, next week, or the week after, but that July monthly has a lot of open interest on the call side. And when we come over and take a look at AMC's actual option chain for this July expiration date here, and we take a look at the call option chain, there's a crazy, crazy high amount of these $145 strikes being held. Are these stupid? Most likely, I probably wouldn't suggest anybody buying these $145 strikes right now. They really don't help anybody, and they're kind of just giving liquidity to a lot of these market makers. But at the end of the day, you guys are going to do what you want to do with your own money. And again, guys, feel free to engage with the video. Drop a comment down below. We are going to get into some very important stuff going on with the overall market, starting off with this $9 trillion loss. Now, when we come over here, the shortest bull case for stocks you will ever read. The first thing here, pretty funny, Goldman and City strategists say it's now time to buy stocks. This came out on January 26th of 2022. Uh, and recently on June 21st, Morgan Stanley and Goldman strategists see more stock market losses because they got this move for this first half of the year completely wrong. Now, what we have to look at also is that stocks are facing a $9 trillion drawdown from their January all-time highs. Hedge funds are reeling left and right, and most Americans are terrified to even open their 401L statements. Uh, and guess what? The banks are now telling clients to sell at the bottom. So again, these financial institutions that are supposed to know what they're doing, that are managing a lot of money for very, very, quote unquote, important individuals, can't even get the direction of the market right. They are overcomplicating things and honestly are very out of touch with the overall economic climate that is going on in the world right now. Now, the other things that I want to kind of take a look at with you guys in this video, aside from this $9 trillion loss, which is one of the main reasons why these large institutions, we've seen Melvin, we've seen Tiger, 3AC, a lot of these big funds in the equity and crypto markets are tasting, uh, taking significant losses. 
There's something that could be around the corner that I want you guys to be aware of. This article right here, we brought up this chart um, in one of the videos from this past weekend. Last week was the most amount of shorting that we saw in the overall market in the last 10 years and the second most amount of shorting that we've seen since 2008. There are two outcomes of this that we were talking about. One, the shorts are going to be correct in shorting this overall market right now, chasing the market down after it has already fallen from that 416 level to a low of about 362. Um, they could be correct, and we see more downturn in the overall market. Remember, we are getting Jerome Powell twice this week. At 9.30 a.m., again, market open tomorrow, we're going to be getting Powell. And at 10 a.m. on Thursday, we are going to be getting statements from Powell Um from the House Financial Services Committee and the Senate Banking Commission. So there are two things that we have to look out there from Powell. We're going to be getting GDP numbers as well coming up soon. So those are some potential bearish catalysts on the overall market. But I want to show you guys a couple of other things as well and then tie this into how we could see AMC squeeze potentially as a result of this because as we know by now on longer time frames when the overall market starts to trend up we start to see AMC and GME having these aggressive price movements to the upside so the one thing I want you guys to keep in mind right now is that we are seeing aggressive selling in the overall market when we come over and take a look at Ortex for SPY there's a couple of key things that I want you guys to take a look at here utilization now SPY's utilization seven days ago, 96.64. Remember, utilization is a ratio that is going to describe to us the amount of shares that institutions are willing to lend versus what has already been loaned out. So it's a metric to kind of track, well, how aggressively shorted is something at any given time. Now, we just saw it hit a peak back here. Well, the last time that we got up to a level like this, right around 100%, if you if you make this chart a little bit bigger on Ortex, it actually touches 100%. But right now, when it's condensed, we're seeing about 93, 94% utilization. This was right around February 21st. When we come over and take a look at the actual SPY chart here, um, and again, you saw what happened with utilization after, it significantly started coming down all the way into April. What did we see with the overall market? When we take a look at the SPY right here and throw this on the daily time frame, remember, end of February going into March. What did we see? We saw a nasty move from these lows all the way down here, this 408 level, all the way up to 460. Now, with the amount of shorting that is happening in the overall market right now and where we could potentially see the market go if we get some positive news catalyst, I do not think it's out of the question that we see a broad market squeeze for a week or two getting us back to some higher levels before the market decides if it wants to consolidate like we previously saw uh, and kind of return on that upward trajectory depending on whether or not the market's going to price in the upcoming rate hikes or come back down and make some new lows. But with the likely outcome is, is we are in for some bullish trajectory over the next couple of weeks with a couple of these things combined. Now, again, these are going to hinge on what Jerome Powell is going to be saying tomorrow and Thursday uh, when he's going to be testifying on monetary policy. Now, since we've talked about this broad market squeeze, there's a couple of things that I want you guys to fully understand. When we talk about squeezes, the market is not going to double or triple in value if you see somewhat of a short squeeze or short covering, but you can see those pretty aggressive price movements to the upside. But what would this mean for potentially AMC? Well, at this time period, the last time when we saw this pretty aggressive run up all the way on March 14th and the 15th, all the way up to uh, about March 29th right here, what happened to AMC on this time period? Well, when we saw the market bounce significantly like this, well, March March 15th right here, then the halt day back up here, the market coming up aggressively can be a pretty significant catalyst for us. But again, you need to see that buying pressure come back in. Remember, a lot of people are talking about volume, uh, but I think people really need to start focusing on buying pressure. That's really the correct terminology that I want everybody to be using. Buying pressure is, is what's going to drive price action. You could have a stock with a volume of 10, but if the buyers are willing to buy at a higher price than the sellers are willing to sell them at at that given time, the price will then go up. Then you see the price increase, more people are getting enticed to trade, and then that's where the volume comes as well as more buyers then start to come in, but you're waiting on that buying pressure to come back in. Now, if this doesn't happen and we don't see this market squeeze happen, what are things looking like for AMC? I'll make another video on this, um, probably uh, at some point during this week on what the state of AMC is like right now. But again, 
we need to think about is we've all kind of put our money into this thing. We're waiting for something big to happen. The short interest is still there. The fundamentals of the company are continuously increasing. And at that point, it is out of our hands. We are most likely going to be at this thing for an extended period of time, as I have been saying since this time last year. So again, guys, that is going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you wouldn't mind dropping some likes down below if you have not already, subscribe for more information like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.